Community is what brings us here this week to pride. Twice in my life, my community has caused me to unravel. Community should be the glue which holds us together, the thing that gives us a common goal, a common strength, a common aim. Community should be something where all voices are affirmed and respected and included. The first time I came unraveled, it was when I came out as a gay man. And coming out, I gave up oppression, or didn't give it up, but I threw it out. I said, oppression will no longer define how I live my life. And as a result, I lost my community. My faith community was one of the most important things to me, and it was taken from me because I was not the person that they wanted me to be. I didn't have the identity they wanted me to have. And I was alone for a long time, and I can tell you that journeying without community is hard because you're faced with all the trials and tribulations that come with life without, without any help. It's this experience of being unraveled which led me to become an advocate for transgender folk. When I came out as transgender, the biggest problem that I saw with our community is the way that transgender folks are systematically silenced and erased from our dialogues, not just in the larger community, but in the LGBTQ community. We are patronized, our inclusion is often a token, and our inclusion in public events is an exception, not a rule. When I moved to Fargo, I came here to get a PhD in clinical psychology. For those of you who don't know what that entails, it is a 55 plus hour a week commitment that includes research, teaching, going to class, and clinical rotations. I don't have time to do anything but my program, but when I came here, I realized that there was not a prominent trans voice doing the work that I could do with the specific gift that I have. And I made the very difficult decision to split myself between my PhD and my community because my community is the most important thing to me. And knowing that trans people in our community have a role model that they can look up to is important to me. We don't need to hear prominent queer voices that aren't trans talking about trans issues. We don't need to be excluded from introductions at block party drag shows. That did happen last night, by the way. We don't need to pay to have our flags flown on Broadway with a rainbow flag. We shouldn't have to muscle our way in and make ourselves a pest at vigils and rallies because no one thought to have a trans voice included. And I shouldn't have to go $6,000 in credit card debt because our nonprofits are not advocating specifically for trans people, and they do not have a trans voice specifically doing that work. The second time I came unraveled was this morning. I'm trying not to cry right now. I'm very upset. I'm only here because I care about the people organizing this. I came unraveled because I feel like my community is not supporting not just me, but my people. I was asked by a member of the Pride Board, not Pride, but the Pride Center Board, if I was upset because trans voices were excluded or because my voice was excluded. The last time I checked, my voice was a trans voice, and it was the voice, and it is the voice, that the local media recognizes as a spokesperson for the trans community, and a voice that has been tirelessly fighting for trans people since she moved here a year ago. If we're going to move forward as a community and intertwine ourselves into a tapestry that covers all people, it is time that we listen. We listen to what the marginalized members of our community are saying. The transgender folk, the asexual folk, the polyamorous folk, all the other plus folk who are tokenized by our institutions, by our organizations, and by our government. We shouldn't have to hold our organizations, our institutions, our leaders accountable. 
for the way that they unravel us. We shouldn't have to pay out of our own pockets to make sure that we are represented. As we move forward, we need to ask ourselves the question, how are we complicit in the oppression which causes our communities to unravel? And if we can't answer that question honestly, then perhaps we don't need to attempt to put it back together.